pleasure and pain icing uh, or uh, spoilage on the cake. Yeah. No, I mean, those are both excellent questions. And, I, you know, I, I think that, I mean, they're really questions for Leibniz as much as me because, yeah. because I think, uh, you know, I think that this is where I think, you know, Leibniz's account of what is actually happening at the level of the activation of the primitive active force in the substance, how it actually happens that it goes from one sub state to another is really, you know, very poorly developed. I mean, he just doesn't say enough about this. And on the one hand, there is the idea that it is the modification itself that is sufficient to take it. But, you know, that's why I, you know, I, I could see as I was reading this, I sort of hesitate, you know, is the, the modification with, with the force, the, the moment of derivative force, is a reason but is it a sufficient reason or not? And it looks like you ought to say, no, it's not a sufficient reason unless you take the laws yeah. as well. And what status does the law have as defining a power? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. An another version of my petite, petite deception question or petite appetition mm. uh, is, uh, is your account really uh, a, uh, a detailed uh, development, probably not the only possible development, uh, of Suk J. Lee's account of the relation between uh, you know, how Leibniz yeah. reconciles uh, concurrence with uh, yeah. intrinsic powers in, in things in which, well, it's the, the, uh, the presence of the petite perception plus the teleology of it that... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot would really depend upon, you know, how... how if you're being true to Leibniz and you actually are going to account for the change in terms of the power of the substance itself, then the answer probably would be no. I mean, it's, it's more than that. Um, but I agree that there's, you know, there's, I need to think about that particular point more and the extent to which that can, Leibniz can be defended on that idea. I just want to come back to the, to the second question you had about, you know, what is really, you know, where's the causal explanation coming? Is it, is it coming at all at the level of, of uh, gross appetites or de you know, desire teleology? And it kind of addresses D Dan's point uh, about freedom at the end there. Because on my understanding, uh, the account of freedom, right, is really a development of, of the desire teleology account. It's just that, you know, it's that intelligence informs our understanding of the good. So we're not just confusing, pursuing the good as a sensory, you know, un, under sensory representation, we're, but we're, perceiving, we're pursuing it as understood as good, and ultimately the good of the universe as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. But that suggests, if, I mean, if that's what's going on there, and, and if you sort of have the idea of Leibniz as, as a kind of, of compatibilist, that, well, yes, it's important that we understand ourselves as, as pursuing the good in this sort of way and that we have that kind of intellectual perfection, but it doesn't actually change the mode of causation by which states are brought about. They're brought about deterministically, and there's just this extra level of representation of what it is that we're doing, and this is important for Leibniz so that we have this extra level of representation, but it doesn't affect how the causation works at all. Could I just say that I've seen four hands raised relatively recently, and I think it's fair we should take them in the order in which they were raised. So the gentleman right at the back, the one on the right hand side. Um, that's fine. Um, so that one quick question was uh, it just purely textual. Where do you know where Leibniz talks about petite apperception rather than just petite perception or appetition? <laughs> I just didn't know that he ever did that, but I, I know Bob, Bob or Dan may know that. I mean, I, I, this is a term of art. Uh, in, in, in Martha's telling nowhere is <laughs> a term invar, yeah, invented by the commentator uh, in this case, and it's, I'm not the first to do this. Uh, but uh, but I mean, there, it might not there, be in I mean, there's no. I mean, Lima certainly talks about about uh, imperceptible strivings. Uh, so you know, even if he doesn't actually use that French expression, the idea is certainly there. But that would seem to be, you were saying petite appetition. Ap right, but were you also saying apperception? No, no I wasn't saying apperception. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, no. But the real question is uh, two different senses of actualizing and bringing about the next state. So it seems like, as you point out, that if uh, Leibniz thinks every substance is in a state of spontaneity or automation as such, it seems like that's true even of pure possibles that they're possible yet spontaneous qua possible. Uh, and so the difference between being potential or having a capacity and being in this middle state would seem to apply to them as much as to the things in the actual world. Um, and so it looks like there should be two senses of bringing about the next state actually. One is um, the law of the series of states, even in a pure possible, uh, where that would be a principle that's in this substance 
it makes it spontaneous, but it doesn't render it actual in the created existence sense because only God has that privilege to bring that about out of himself. So I was wondering if, I mean, that didn't play a role in your, in your presentation, the difference between actual versus potential as spontaneous but still possible on the one hand and actual versus potential in the sense of created uh, on the other hand. Uh, yeah. I didn't know if you'd want to. Well, I mean, you and I have talked about this before. Clint and I are colleagues. So we, yeah. uh, I, I think you and I dis disagree fundamentally at some level about the significance of the idea of, of the striving of possibles. Uh, I don't think there are any substances prior to their actualization or creation by God. What a possible. For Leibniz? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what a possible is, is merely an idea in God's intellect that represents the way one something would be. But I don't, I mean, I, I just don't agree at all with the idea that striving of, that the pos, striving of possibles is in any way, is anything more than an analogy or metaphor for the striving of the primitive active force of a substance. So, so you think there are no possible substances? Well, <laughs> Leibniz says explicitly that a possible substance is just an idea of a substance that God might create. Okay. Well, yeah, they're not, they're not possible substances. Yeah. Andrew is next in the back here. Um, thanks, Don. I'm somehow sitting in a different stool. Um, I just wanted to ask about how uh, the thing you started off talking about, the single world law fits into all this, the, the real general order underneath the subordinate maxims and so forth. Um, and in particular, how it would work in a complicated situation where at the level of the desire teleology, somebody's actually desiring a miracle, even a miracle of the first order, um, such that you're going to have to then tell us some sort of story about how that relates to the what the monads at the petite percepion level are are desiring. Um, but what they're desiring, I take it, I mean, it depends on how you think that the the big general order is related to what the natures. Uh, contain, whether you think it's part of the nature or, or part of the essence. I know there's a controversy in the literature about that as to whether the kind of big general order is somehow articulated in the structure of the finite monads or whether it's just something in God's idea of the finite monads and so forth. But I'm wondering if even abstracting from that controversy, how the relationship between these two levels of teleology gets spelled out when, especially when we have a desire consciously at the level of gross appetite for something like a miracle. I guess I'm not completely seeing the, the force of the question. I mean, I, I don't have a lot to say about this, about this general world law because Leibniz yeah. himself says almost nothing about it. So, you know, we could, we could sort of speculate on what would be the best reconstruction of, of such an idea, but, you know, very, very little textual evidence on that in Leibniz. But what I guess what I, 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 guess what I didn't see was you were... You're putting a lot of weight on this idea of you know desiring a miracle, mm -hmm. uh, and why that would be somehow difficult to account for within the representational content of the monad states or something like that, and that I didn't quite see. I mean, you know, monads uh, presumably, I mean, I being one of them, desire all sorts of crazy things that mm -hmm. you know aren't realizable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could desire impossible states of affairs, you know. So, so yeah. I don't, I don't quite see that there's a, a special difficulty about that. So maybe I'm just not sure. Yeah. It. Okay. So I guess on the view according to which the the little perceptions yeah. Yeah. do not include the kind of miracles of the first order. It looks as though we're moving from one state of the world to the next on account of God's idea of the essences, uh -huh. but this isn't embedded in the natures. Okay, I, I see and, a little bit more now, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. But, at, but it seems as though at the gross level, we can still have desires for these sorts of things, even right. miracles of the first order. Right, right, right. And so then I wonder if okay, you can so, tell so, I mean, the story think, that you told to Dan about the relationship. Between yeah, the yeah. I, I think the, the problem is more the first point, right? Okay. That if, if, if the development of the world order that I'm claiming um, is the content determined by the petite apperception is identical with the physical laws of the mm -hmm. world, right? Then that might 
look as if there's no room for miracles to occur, right? So, right. so the question is really, uh, if there are miraculous events, events which are, which are exceptions to the, to the laws of nature, right? And I say that the petite apoception are developing in accordance with the laws of nature, how would it ever be the case that a monad was able to represent a miraculous state of affairs. Right. I mean, I take it that's, so that's a, a fundamental question, but yeah. I was also kind of curious about. But I, but I, I guess that, that's okay. where I see the real challenge to okay. right. being there. And, you know, the account I gave would therefore have to be amended in some way. Yeah. Not quite sure exactly how to do that, but that, that's the issue. But the other point, I mean, I, I just didn't see, you know, the, the content of, of monadic desires, that is the gross appetites, yeah. it seems to me is not directly explicable in terms of the physical state in which it finds itself, mm. right? In some sense, it's got to supervene. It's got to sort of, it's, it, it, it's no more than that, but you know, it, there's, there's all sorts of confusion okay. built into that content, and how exactly to account for that you know, within the terms of this desire teleology. I mean, I don't have a really well right. worked okay. out story on that. So but just, that, just because yeah. the gross appetite is for a miracle of the first order, that doesn't mean anything in the fundamental no, appetites so. contains Because that. as I said, I it could be, the desire could be for anything. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Malta. Uh, I, I guess I so. Um, what I want to ask you about is from near the beginning of your paper, the um, Leibniz um, uh, caution when he reintroduces the notion of substantial forms that they should not be used to explain any of the operations of bodies, yeah. but nevertheless um, they are required as natures that are the, the metaphysical grounds of the forces that do these things in bodies. And you put it, you, you set it up in such a way that that 